1985 when I got selected to be an astronaut. Awesome. Um, you know, as, as somebody who has such a rich history with NASA and in Houston, um, you know, what is it like for you to see this happen, uh, to basically bring human spaceflight uh, back to NASA, back to America? Um, and what do you think people in Houston are, are thinking about this with their, you know, emotional and personal connection to having NASA in their backyard? Oh, absolutely. Well, first off, I mean, the Houston connection, the astronauts live and work in Houston. Mission controls in Houston. I mean, all the training facilities, uh, there's a huge tie between Houston and the astronauts. And uh, Bob and Doug, uh, I'm, I know they are happy to represent uh, their hometown as they're down here at the Cape getting ready to launch, uh, as well as their spouses, Megan and Karen. Uh, I can't think of a, a greater couple of guys to be doing this first test flight on the uh, Crew Dragon on the uh, Falcon 9. You know, it, it's really important. It's been nine years since we had an American launch to space with an American crew. And uh, it was July 2011 when uh, Fergie landed Atlantis here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. And since then, you know, we have been working to establish this commercial crew program, to establish a commercial environment to change KSC into a multi-user spaceport that supports both government and commercial operations. And having, uh, you know, SpaceX and uh, down the road here, Boeing flying crews to the International Space Station, not having to rely on our Russian partners, it, extremely important. So uh, I can't, you know, I am really excited, all right? This is going to be awesome to once again see crews launching on U.S. rockets from here at the Cape uh, to go to space. You know, we've talked a lot about the what this, this demo mission paves the way for in terms of uh, increased access to space, the ability to do more research aboard the space station. Do you foresee, you know, uh, many years down the line that this could turn into uh, constant human space travel the same way that we fly a commercial plane? Well, absolutely, uh, but we're talking a ways down the road. Right now, I mean, this is the very beginning of uh, commercial space flight uh, for humans, and it's still extremely costly, but, you know, I'm a student of history, and I look back, you know, Orville and Wilbur flew that first flight of the aircraft December 17, 1903, you know, 117 years ago, right? But if you look at aviation, I mean, it was pretty flat before it kind of took off exponentially. And, you know, you look back to air mail and the barnstormers and all that went on. Uh, when we finally did start flying uh, passengers, it was only for the, the very rich. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the way uh, spaceflight is today. But the goal, the goal is to establish that uh, commercial economy in low Earth orbit, to have uh, commercial access to space and to drive down the costs. And that's one of the things that we've done through the commercial crew program, through commercial cargo to the International Space Station, is to have the competition and uh, drive down the cost of going to space. I, I think we're a long ways from uh, having it be where you can go buy a, you know, a ticket comparable to a Southwest Airlines ticket to fly to space. But, you know, that's the ultimate goal down the road. And th this is a, a first step. So I, I couldn't be more pleased with the progress that we've made. And I just want to see us establish the ability to fly uh, our astronauts to space here to establish that commercial uh, low Earth orbit economy so that NASA can focus on that hard job of exploring beyond our own planet, uh, getting back to the moon with Artemis, getting the first woman, next man on the moon in 2024, and then moving on to Mars. And as a former astronaut, Mr. Cabana, you know, you have sat in that very seat, you know, and you know what it's like to, to launch into outer space. Are you able to give some insight into what uh, Colonel Benkin and, and uh, Doug Hurley are thinking when they finally arm that that uh, ejection uh, ejection seat, and they basically say, "All right, we're locked in, we're fueling up, and we're getting ready for liftoff." What's going through their mind? I, I feel like it's like a like an athlete. They say, "Oh, I just got to get you know, got to get in the moment." I just think about that. But what have you thought about? Absolutely. Well, first off, uh, there's great anticipation, and this will be a new ride for them. Uh, they've flown on uh, the shuttle to space. Uh, this is a different rocket. It's going to feel different. It's going to look different. But what is going to prepare them for this flight is all the time they've spent uh, working with SpaceX, developing the flight control laws for it, uh, training in the simulator, the knowledge that they have of the vehicle, uh, the knowledge that they have working with their uh, control team, their ops team. It's that knowledge that is going to prepare them and make them ready. 
And, uh, you know, if they're anything like me, they're going to be thinking, you know, boy, I want to make sure I do my job. I don't want to let anybody down. I want to do it 100% correct, not make any mistakes. Uh, there's a lot riding on this, and I, I got a lot of folks watching that I want to, I want to make sure that I do well uh, for all the hard work that they put into this vehicle. Um, you know, I got asked one time, uh, are you, uh, were you afraid uh, when you flew in space? And I, I was never afraid, and it, it's because I knew I was uh, good at what I did, that I had the best team on the ground supporting me, that I was very, very well prepared. I had the knowledge to do what I had to do. And, and I knew that uh, God was going to take care of me and my family uh, no matter what happens. And it, I think um, it, very much so all astronauts, uh, you know, when they climb into that vehicle, they know the risk they're taking, but they also know that nothing worth doing is without risk and that they are well prepared for it. They have the knowledge to uh, be successful and they have an awesome team on the ground that is supporting them. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked a little bit about how this spacecraft looks and feels very different. You know, with all the air, excuse me, spacecraft that you've seen and, and been a part of, what do you think of how this looks? I, I remember uh, the astronauts describing it as very futuristic. What's your take on it? It's a very clean design. Having been in the, uh, now I haven't actually been in the spacecraft itself. I've seen pictures, but having been in the the uh, simulator, uh, the mock-up uh, out in Hawthorne, uh, it's very different from the, the space shuttle. The space shuttle was full of, you know, knobs and dials and gauges and switches, just thousands of switches in the cockpit. Uh, this is a very clean design. It's very automated. And uh, they have essentially three uh, touchscreen displays that the two of them will be interfacing with the computers on the, uh, on the spacecraft. And then uh, they also have some hard switches for the critical functions that uh, need to be accomplished. But uh, throughout the day, it's a very uh, clean, open design uh, much different from uh, a normal uh, fighter plane uh, that you would uh, get into with all its uh, switches and everything, and very different from the shuttle. Gotcha. Um, you know, there's a there's so much excitement down here, as I'm, I'm sure you're aware of. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but it's, it's a little bit hard that we can't all necessarily be in the same place to watch this launch happen. Many of us will be watching them either on our phones or on television while we have to stay a little bit apart. Um, What's your message to people who uh, aren't maybe able to gather in the same way that they have in the past to watch such a historic moment? Well, uh, for those folks that are here in Florida, uh, nearby, man, walk outside and watch it. You are still going to see an awesome launch. You might not be as close as you'd like to be, but you will still see that launch. And, and while you're watching it, have uh, NASA TV up on your phone uh, so that you can watch what's going on live at the same time. Everybody across the nation needs to dial in to uh, the programming that's going to be on NASA TV uh, that will be live streamed uh, is an event. This is historic. Uh, in years since we launched a, a human out of the Cape on a U.S. rocket, uh, this is another first. And, and there aren't many firsts that come along. I had this talk with uh, uh, Doug and Bob. I mean, for, uh, for a couple of test pilots, you know, it, it's pretty darn awesome to get a first flight on a uh, – on a new vehicle, and uh, Doug's really looking forward to it. Uh, when you look back, you know, you consider Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and the space shuttle, and now, you know, coming down the road, we're going to have this first flight of the Dragon, we'll get a first flight with crew on uh, the Boeing CSC-100, and a first flight on Orion. There aren't many first flights, and so this is, uh, this is special, it's historic, and uh, everybody needs to watch. It, it, awesome. Any message for your Houstonians here uh, before we let you go? Absolutely. I, uh, you know, Houston uh, plays a rich history in America's space program. And uh, I still have a, a son and his family live there. Um, I, uh, I really, really enjoy uh, Houston. One of the things I really miss is my season tickets to the Astros. But uh, since we're not playing any baseball right now anyway, that, that's not too bad. But uh, no, uh, Houston's a great town. It's a great place to live. And uh, I just uh, I want to thank the entire city of Houston for uh, their support of America's space program, what goes on at the Johnson Space Center and uh, across NASA. And please tune in, watch uh, history being made tomorrow at 4.33 in the afternoon as we launch uh, Bob and Doug off into space on their way to the International Space Station. I don't need to tell you this. I can practically guarantee you we're going to have a big audience down this way for it. So we're looking forward to it. Thanks so much for taking some time, sir. We appreciate it. Good luck. Absolutely. Great talking with you. Take care.